What am I doing with all this? Right? Alex, why do you have so much tackle laid out? How do you put all that in your bag? Well, today I'm going to talk about how I put all this, and not all of it, but how I put stuff in my bag. So we're going to do a bag review of my tackle bag, and I'm going to show you guys how I pack, planning ahead for a fishing trip for one day. That's it. And I'm going to put all the necessities in one tackle bag. Let's get on with it. All right, guys, so this is my tackle bag right here. Now, this is a piss of fun tackle bag. You can find it on Amazon. I'll actually put in the description a link to Amazon on where to get this bag. Now, you may have seen some other guys on YouTube with bags that are like this, if not the same thing. This is a knockoff version, and I will say it all day, a copied knockoff version of the Wind River bag. Okay, the Wind River bag has got like a flashlight built into the front, and it's just, it's like 170 bucks, okay? And I got this probably four months ago. This is 99 bucks, okay? So I'm talking like you're $70 difference for pretty much a flashlight. It ain't worth it to me. This bag right here has been fantastic. One of the things I really like about it, besides the fact that it'll hold four 3,600 size tackle boxes. That's the 10 by seven boxes. It will hold four of them. But in the bottom down here, it's got a rain cover that just folds up and it's right into the bottom. So if you're out in that stuff where the rain starts hitting out of nowhere, unzip that, wrap it around the bag, you got it covered. It's waterproof, taken care of. But that's not what I really want to talk about today. I want to talk about the bag and I want to talk about what I put in my bag before I go fishing, okay? So this bag in particular, first thing up top, you've got a molded sunglasses case, which is good because I'm horrible about remembering sunglasses. I usually have two pair on me. I've got one on my head and I got one extra spare in here. So right up there, I keep my polarized sunglasses right there, secured, protected, packed away, no scratches on the lens. Pliers right here. I've got two sets of pliers. And the reason I have two sets of pliers is because I tend to forget things. Like I said already, this morning, I left a pair of pliers out of the pond. So hopefully I can go back tonight and find those pliers and I'll still have them. Who knows? Up front here, front pocket. What I tend to carry right here is gonna be my scale. Throw my scale in there. I also keep the extra hook just in case because sometimes those clamps that come on the scales, they're just not quite big enough. So I wanna have an extra option of something to weigh a fish. I have yet to find a fish that is too big to put on the clamp. That's just, that's, that's me though. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't chase big fish. I don't catch big fish. Anyways, second thing I put in there, scissors. Nail clippers, whatever it may be, something to cut your line, to cut your braid, something. Carry a knife, carry scissors, carry nail clippers, whatever you need to do. Another thing that I like to carry on me at all times is two extra spools of line. My most used line, fluorocarbon and braid. Don't care about the brand. That's what I carry just in case. I end up with a backlash that is so bad that I actually have to cut it out of the spool. I want to have some backup. So I carry 15 pound fluoro and I carry 50 pound braid. That's what I carry on me. Those will fit right up there up top. Sealed up, zipped up, good to go, right? So on to the next. Now, tackle boxes. Let's talk tackle boxes. This thing has got, like I said, a lot of room in here, room for four 3600 series tackle boxes. So before I go out, I think about the water that I'm going to. Okay. Am I going to a pond? Am I going to a dam? Am I going to a big reservoir? Am I going to a small lake? Am I going to be in my kayak? Am I going to be beating the banks? I've got tackle boxes specifically designed and separated for that. So this weekend, my plan is to go out to some smaller lakes, beating the banks, possibly on the kayak. So what I've done is I think about that lake, I think about the body of water, and what are the fish eating? We gotta match the hatch, right? So on the lakes a lot lately down here in Oklahoma, they're still eating crawfish, okay? So they're still gonna be eating on jigs. They're chasing bluegill and they're chasing shad. So what I'm gonna do, and obviously frogs, we can't forget the frogs. So this box right here, I have specifically for frogs. This is all frogs in here, all kinds of frogs, different frogs. This is what I carry in this box right here. 
I usually just stick with one or two of the frogs for that day, but I wanna have some options. If I know they're going after dark because big bodies of water, I'm gonna have my dark frogs. If I'm out in the open water and I know they're chasing shad and I know they're chasing bluegill, I'm gonna have my whites. I'm gonna have stuff that imitates a bait fish to toss up on those banks, toss up in the grass, get in that thick stuff that's very tough to hit, top water, have your frogs ready to go. Now, I know that right now they're starting to chase bait fish, so I wanna carry my crankbait box. Now this is one of the boxes that this bag comes with. It comes with four of these boxes. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these, which is why I replaced some of them. But this one in particular, what they come with, it's just lines down the box. Not divided, just lines, little crevices, little canyons, whatever you wanna call it, little grooves in the box. But I can fit two crankbaits in there. I can fit my poppers in there, whopper floppers. That's what I've got in there. On the other side, I've got some more top water, some more whopper floppers, some prop baits, some rattle traps, and jointed swim baits. That's what I carry in this one. So that's gonna go, because I know for a fact they're chasing fish. I wanna match the hatch. Next thing, dog days of summer are here, fish are lazy, okay? You got times of the day where they're lazy, they're not gonna chase anything. You gotta get them, you gotta finesse them, you got to entice them to bite. So what I've done here, this is a lot of old plastics that I've had sitting here for a while, but I go and dedicate each crevice or each canyon, each row to a specific plastic. So in here, I've got some paddle tail swim baits. I got some crack and cross, crack and cross, some creature baits, creature baits, more creature baits, some baby brush hogs, some more crack and cross, and I throw some trench hogs in there as well. On the other side, I've got all my worms. Pretty much all stick bait, slim shake, trick worms, senkos, ribbon tail worms. That's what I've got in there. This is kind of my fallback plan. I carry this with me as a just in case. Next one that I would always carry with me is this right here. Bass Dash Tackle Box, sealed up, waterproof. This is what I like to carry. Now in here, I've got my terminal tackle. This is my terminal tackle box. I've got my nail weights, my drop shot weights, my pegs, tungsten weights, flipping weights, punching weights, worm weights, EWG hooks, straight shank hooks, worm hooks, shaky head hooks, and Ned Rig, Ned Rig hooks. That's what I carry in here, along with jigs. I gotta carry all my blacklist bait jigs with me. You know what I'm saying? Gotta carry blacklist bait jigs. So my jigs stay in the main compartment right here. Everything else is all terminal tackle. Seal it up, waterproof, that's how I like it. So, those are my four tackle boxes that I take with me if I'm going to a small body of water, a lake, beating the banks, or the kayak. That's what I'm doing. These boxes here, I will be incorporating these pretty soon, okay? This one I've got my spinner baits, my chatter baits, a couple of wake baits, and a couple of big swim baits. But this does not come with me right now because that's not the style of fishing I'm doing. I'm not really power fishing much. I'm more so finesse fishing. So, that stays there. This tackle box right here, this one is dedicated to fishing the dam. If I'm going after sand bass, hybrids, stripers, that's what this box is dedicated to. I've got terminal tackle, I got some swim baits, a lot of jig heads, a lot of big hooks, some twisted tail grubs. That's what I'm carrying in this box here. Along with this one, kind of, kind of thin right now, but swim baits, paddle tail swim baits, I'm gonna throw on a jig hook or my crank baits, my deep diving crank baits, and, and my jerk baits. Okay, a lot of shad color stuff in here. That's what I'm carrying, some tilapia swim baits, but I'm carrying that in there because that's for the dam because I'm going after sand bass hybrid stripers. Oklahoma, that's what I'm going after. That's what I want to catch. So, here's the, these three boxes stay home. So now I got my four boxes in here set up for the weekend. I'm gonna seal that up. I'm done with that. Now, in this front pocket right here, you got another front pocket right here, zips up. I put my little hatchet in there. It's got some 550 cord in there, because you never know when you do, or when you might run into something, some kind of survival situation. We're not doing a survival challenge, I'm not doing that, but always be prepared. So, that hatchet is staying in there, sealed up. A lot of times I'll throw some extra baits in there, which I probably will do coming up here in just a second. So we're gonna set that aside. 
That is set with the boxes. Now I need to figure out which baits I'm gonna take with me for fishing small bodies of water. Ponds, lakes, banks, kayak, anything like that. What do I know works? What do I know that I'm gonna fish with? That's the key and that's how you go about separating things and knowing what to take with you. Because when you have an abundance of tackle, I know me personally, I think I have too much which I know is blasphemy, and I get that. But I feel like I get overwhelmed because I carry so much tackle on me. So that's another reason why I wanted to do this video to talk about don't overwhelm yourself. Think about what they're biting, think about what they're eating, think about the water clarity, okay? The water clarity that I know I'm going to is a little bit tannic. It's clear, but it's got some brown to it, okay? So I know for a fact my Senko's hit. So I'm gonna go through all my Guggen baits, lunker logs here. And I'm gonna pick out the colors that I know are gonna work. So I'm gonna take a baby bass, I'm gonna take a green pumpkin blue, and I'm gonna take a June bug. Watermelon red, eh, maybe, but with that darker color of water, that's what I'm gonna stick with. We'll toss in a green pumpkin too. So these right here, set those aside, put the extras to the side. Don't worry about them. Don't get in your head. Don't think, well, what about this? Well, what about this? Stick with a plan. Make a plan, stick to it. Now, in this big, big compartment right here, this is where I put a lot of my plastics, a lot of my extra terminal tackle, not terminal tackle, but extra tackle that I'm gonna use for terminal tackle, that I'm gonna throw on a hook, that I'm gonna throw on a jig, anything like that. So I know for a fact, trench hogs work out there. So I'm taking my trench hogs. Those are going in. Next. Slim shake worm, possibly Mondo worm, more likely, because they are getting more finicky and you wanna drive them crazy. So, I'm gonna throw in a couple of Mondo worms. I got the blue fleck, I got the watermelon red. Those are going in there. Slim shake, probably not. Probably not gonna take that along with me. I prefer this for more pawns. I want to go after the big ones. I want to entice the big ones. So I'm going to set Slim Shake aside. Now that I've got the big baits on there, now I'm going to start tossing in the smaller ones. So all my Senkos, all my Lunker Logs, they're going in right there. Now, if I'm throwing jigs, Oklahoma, I'm going to want to throw something for a swim jig. So I'm going to want a trailer for a swim jig, and I'm going to want a trailer to match a craw or a creature. So I'm going to come over to my crack and cross here. Now I got the natural, I got bright white, we got green pumpkin, and we have blue baby. <sighs> Let's think about the color of the water. We're gonna go green pumpkin, we're gonna go natural. I'm taking those two with me. Blue baby, bright white, staying aside. Bandito bug, natural, Okeechobee craw. I know Okeechobee craw hit on the trench hog, so I'm gonna go Okeechobee Craw. I got a couple of green pumpkins in there too, so I'm gonna take those as well. Natural is gonna stay aside. Now, trailers for my swim jigs. I'm going to take both of these, all right? I'm taking Lab Magic to throw on my, blue, my more bluegill color swim jigs and I'm taking the Pearl Flash to throw on my white and my crappie swim jigs. Those are going with me, but those are not going up top. These are gonna go over onto the side here. Side pocket, very spacious right there. Throw them right in there, okay? Next thing, flukes, because I know they're chasing shad. So, I'm gonna take my shad color Zoom Super Salty Fluke right there. And I'm gonna take the VM pork shad flukes right here. So, more shad color, a little more white with some blue fleck in there. I'm taking those along with me. I'm throwing those in the side pocket. Sealing that up, I'm good. I'm done with that one. Next pocket here. Now, Ned rigs have been killing it for me lately. You guys have seen that. I absolutely love taking Ned rigs along with me. But do I wanna take a drop shot as well? I'm not as comfortable with a drop shot right now. So I'm gonna stick with the Ned Rigs. That's what I'm gonna do. So the Ned Rig, the color that has hit the most out there 
as far as the Guggen baits, Rattling Ned is gonna be the Mud Minnow. Mud Minnow has been hitting. Mud Minnow is kind of a green pumpkin with a pearl color on the back. I know that's hitting, so I'm gonna take that along with me. I got another one in. I got Dirty Rice. Dirty Rice has almost got like a green pumpkin with a copper flake in there and then a baby bass color on the back. I'm taking that one as well because I think that one's gonna hit. The other one that I really wanna try and get onto, just because of the water, I'm gonna take a, cop, a blue penny, not copper penny, a blue penny, which is copper color and blue on the side. I'm probably gonna take those just in case. Next ones that I'm gonna take, my Z-Mans. Now, I don't, I have not had any luck on the crawls lately. So I'm not taking those because I know they're not a for sure thing. So the crawls are staying inside with the other Ned Rig baits there. However, the hogs, the TRD hogs, this color right here, we got Canada Craw, and then we've got Drew's Craw. I'm gonna take both of these along with me because I wanna have some backup. Last but not least, I'm taking this pack. It's kind of a mixed pack of the TRD worms here. So I got some hula sticks, I got some peanut butter and jelly worm, and then I got some molten crawl worm. I'm taking those along with me as well. I'm gonna seal that up. That's gonna be good to go. Drop shots, drag and drops, trick shots, all these things, they're staying aside. I'm not taking them with me because I'm not comfortable with them just yet. I need to do a review, I need to test them out, but I'm going after fish. I don't wanna take out and I, want, I don't wanna experiment with stuff. I wanna go with what works. So if you're going fishing, you're chasing fish, take what works. Pack, set a plan, stick to the plan, execute the plan. That's what you gotta do. Now I got some extra stuff around here. I got some big worms, I got some eliminators, I got some other, other flukes, some of these trick worms, some of these Z-Man fatty Z's, or fatties. Do I need to take these? Part of me says yes, because who knows? But the other part of me is saying, no, Alex, you got a plan. Stick to the plan, execute the plan. So those are not going. However, these guys right here, these big 11, 11 inch worms, the 11 inch blitz worm, it's a floating worm. I'm taking this with me. I'm gonna use this to punch. I'm gonna pair this up with a three quarter ounce weight, a straight shank hook, because this worm floats. I've seen the action on it. Get that weight dropping and that worm just floats right in their face. So we're definitely taking this guy and we're gonna throw that up top. Last but not least in my bag over here on the side, this is where I keep an extra flashlight, still works. And I got a little GoPro tripod in there, but that's it guys. So in my bag, before I go out to a body of water, I know in my tackle bag, I have got my terminal tackle. I have got my frogs. I have got my crank baits. I've got a couple of swim baits. I've got plenty of plastics because it's summertime. That's what I want to do. I want to target these fish that are a little more finicky. If I run into an issue with line, I've got two spools of line there. I got 15 pound fluoro and I got 50 pound braid. That's set, that's taken care of. I got pliers with me. I got a cup holder to take my drink. I've got swim bait trailers. I've got flukes. I've got Ned rigs. I've got everything that I need all in this bag right here, okay? Just to show you how much this bag can take, let's unpack it again and show you guys what all can fit in this bag. That's it. That's everything that fits in there. All this stuff in that bag. in that one bag right there and that will cover you for an entire day I guarantee you that entire day of fishing right there take multiple rigs with you you're set up for everything so thanks for watching guys I hope this video helps people out I hope it shows off the bag shows what it's capable of and shows how I plan ahead for a fishing trip I'll see you guys out on the water